Toxic Masculinity Straight Rye Whiskey. Powerful or impotent? Let's find out. Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies, and in this video I'm going to do a review of the Toxic Masculinity Straight Rye Whiskey. It says, Gentleman's Spirit. This is batch number one. When I first heard about this, I thought it was kind of funny, and I thought, well, I got to get me a bottle of that. So I've been on the waiting list for uh, quite some time. They finally had the release, and so I got a bottle. Now, uh, what is this Toxic Masculinity all about? Uh, is this really a uh, gentleman's spirit? And right here it says, unapologetically strong. Well, what we want to find out is, uh, does all that really fit this whiskey? And what is toxic masculinity? I'm going to touch on that just a little bit. But before I do, here are my notes about this whiskey. Toxic Masculinity Straight Rye Whiskey, batch number one, made from blending two straight rye mash bills. The combined mash bill for this batch is 84% rye, 11% corn, and 5% malted barley. Aged in seasoned New American White Oak for uh, two to four years. It was 50% was aged in a 30 gallon barrels for varied char levels. It's bottled at 45% ABV or 90 proof and with a total production of 1,540 bottles. Currently sells for about $65 here in the United States. Alrighty, so color-wise, it has that sort of golden amber color look, just like a bourbon or a rye. Now, toxic masculinity. So, uh, there was a uh, Gillette commercial, um, you know, basically addressing uh, this so-called uh, social phenomenon of uh, toxic masculinity. And there's been a bunch who have responded to this idea. Uh, Joe Rogan, for example, Jordan Peterson, and many others. And I got to uh, conclude, is, 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 along with uh, Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson and a bunch of others, is I don't think there is such a thing as toxic masculinity. What you're really talking about is some men guys, some men, uh, just being total jackasses, being brutes, uh, being tyrannical, uh, and misbehaving. But that's not to be attributed, those characteristics, to any kind of masculinity. It's not a toxic masculinity. This whole coining of the term toxic masculinity is really a sort of a leftist, uh, uh, extreme feminist response uh, to um, their fears of some sort of hyper patriarchalism, right? Now I know we're talking about social and political issues in the context of doing a whiskey review, but that's what this producer has introduced. Now, if you study branding and marketing of whiskeys or wines or any other, sometimes some brands will use a social topic, uh, usually not this quite aggressive, uh, and addressing it. For example, um, perhaps uh, the, the um, illness of breast cancer. There was a, a winery, for example, in which the uh, founder of the winery, his wife had breast cancer. And so he featured on uh, the bottles pictures of women who had uh, become survivors of breast cancer. His wife, unfortunately, passed away from it. Uh, however, there's been others that say, oh, breast cancer is a really hot topic. Let's put a sticker on our bottle and say, hey, a certain percentage of our funds will go to support breast cancer. And so what you do in branding and marketing to sort of make yourself stand out from other brands is see if you can grab onto some sort of uh, popular cause to strike at the emotions of people so that then they'll want to buy your product, whether it's coffee, uh, a wine, uh, a whiskey, or whatever. Some, it might be environmental issues. Some, it could be some other political issues. Uh, and in this case, this is sort of a response to the knee-jerk uh, sort of extreme leftist, uh, feminist um, response to what really is not a characteristic of masculinity, but really of just that some men are jerks, some are tyrants, some use their um, testosterone uh, for evil rather than for good. Now, a true man, a true masculine person is one who... Uh, you know, he takes responsibility for his behavior. He is uh, the head of his household. 
He looks after his wife and his children. He is a pillar in the community. Uh, he is one to whom people look up to and uses his strength uh, not to be a tyrant over others, but rather to be an exemplar uh, in the community. And that is true masculinity, one who stands for goodness and truth and justice. That is masculinity, not being an a-hole uh, and being tyrannical over others, perhaps using some sort of your physical prowess and strength uh, or whatever else uh, to sort of dominate and, and abuse other people. All right, enough about that. Let's get into the whiskey. Now, on the nose, if I was going blind, it has a distinctive rye character. It's got that spice, it's got a little bit of that herbal character, it's got a little bit of that root beer. Um, it has, the corn notes are showing through. It has the caramels, it has the baking spices of a bourbon, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon, clove. Definitely the cinnamon is kicking in there. Now those caramels. There's a little bit of a, a, a dry, grassy note, an herbal note coming from the rye. But it doesn't really seem distinct uh, or necessarily any stronger than your run-of-the-mill NGP uh, rye or high rye bourbon on the nose. Let's try it on the palate. One more. I would say it's an okay rye. Um, it tasted blind. I don't know if I would take this for a rye or take this for a high rye bourbon because it does seem to have a lot of the corn notes uh, showing up there. It's a moderate. It, it, it's, it's an okay. It's not bad. It's not great. It's nothing to uh, uh, rave about. It's definitely not, as they write here, unapologetically strong. So it's failing at that point. Okay, What they're claiming it to be is not really uh, matching what's actually in the glass. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying the imagery that I think they're trying to put forth on the ball isn't matching the, in the glass. Score-wise, I'm going to go 83, 84 points. I think it's just sort of an okay whiskey. Now, there is a rye that I think is bold and is strong and is, uh, let me say, unapologetically strong that really exemplifies the character of what I would consider to be a nice, strong, bold rye, and it's actually Milam Green Rye Whiskey. This actually uh, finished in a port wine cast, 47% alcohol by volume. I've already reviewed this. I'll put a link at the end of this video. And this whiskey is actually made by uh, three women and a really tall dude. So. Uh, this is bold. This is powerful. This is strong. This is really well balanced. This has that sort of really bold rye character, and yet it's got a really nice root beer character to it, uh, and it's really sort of sweet and luscious and, and, and powerful, and yet it's only 2% more an ABV uh, than this toxic masculinity. One of the better things is when they brought in that port cast, which adds another layer of development, but also because it spent some time in uh, Texas, in the Texas heat. So if I was going to give a tip to someone who wants to claim to be unapologetically strong, you need to bump up the ABV, you need to put some more uh, age on it. it. It needs to be a bolder whiskey if you're going to put that kind of uh, 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 you know, label on it, right? So it's not bad, it just isn't uh, necessarily... Uh, unapologetically strong. It's just an okay thing. And anybody who buys it is probably going to buy it more as a gimmick because as a standalone whiskey, tasting a blind, it, it's not something that's really going to impress you. They're going to uh, buy it because they're sort of buying into the message that's on the bottle rather than what's in the contents of the bottle itself. All right. All right, that's it for this review. If you are one of my Patreons, I want to thank you very much uh, for uh, supporting the channel, being part of my little group. If you like my videos but not yet subscribed, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when I go live or post a new video. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.